what made me want to join the military? Well, from a young age, I think I was probably in like 10th grade, and my parents were both Air Force. They both retired. At the time when I was in 10th grade, they were still both in. But they are both Air Force. My grandfather was Army. I mean, we were a military family. Two of my brothers joined the military as well. It was just the, it was the direction we were going. And I knew from 10th grade that I wanted to join the military. I was in a mobile unit. My first unit was a mobile unit. And so we deployed a lot. That meant that we were being sent TDY, which is temporary duty, to different places. And it was a common thing for our unit. And so we went to different places, Egypt, Kuwait, stuff like that. We also went to places that were in America, just not our own place. We did communications. Wherever we went, we were doing communications. That's the field I was in. My, I was a communicator, and so I didn't do radio comm. That was a different group. Uh, we did information security. So we handled messages, uh, telephone, and on the computer that were normally classified. And we got those messages from one unit to another. It's basically like a glorified fax machine. But, um, but that's what, what we did. And so I was one who received and sent messages like that. My career now is uh, that of an educator. I'm a teacher at a high school now. Um, it's definitely fulfilling, fulfilling. For me, it's, it's what I've been doing. Not necessarily at a high school level, but teaching is what I've been doing all my life. Today we're talking about leadership. So some people know this already, but I would imagine most people don't know that there's actually a difference between leadership and management. Leadership is focused on the people, and management is focused on the task. As you see, there are different styles of leadership. I'm not talking about which ones there are yet, but depending on your personality, that might help you choose what style of leadership you choose. Does that make sense? Depending on your group, the personalities within your group, and of course, last but not least, depending on what you're trying to get done will determine what style of leadership you choose. So each one has a different style of leadership that they're using. And one of them is authoritarian. And the other one, or another one is participative, and then laissez-faire. Every job I've had, and nearly every one of them, I either was designed to be a teacher as far as when I was a military training instructor, that by design was teaching. To me, it was a natural progression to actually become a teacher and I've been enjoying every minute of it. How do I think my, perceive, my students perceive me? I can only tell you what I hope they perceive of me um, because I, I can't get in their heads. Now, sometimes I get tidbits. You know, someone will say something and I get to see a little bit of how they feel or think about me. But for the most part, I hope they see me as encouraging, as influential, as one having standards, um, both in my personal life and my work life. I, I try to be well-rounded. I think I am well-rounded. Uh, by that I mean, I think that I'm a family guy. I'm work-oriented. I'm uh, involved in my community, whether it be church or otherwise. And I, I try to make sure as much as I can that I can, you know, let those things overlap when they can. Uh, so that's why I sometimes do community events and I ask, you know, students and staff, not all the staff, not all the students obviously, but I ask them to get involved with those things that I'm doing outside of school because I think that's part of teaching, that not only do I get involved in the community, but I influence or try to influence and try to teach and lead students to get involved in the community as well. And so being well-rounded is, is what that's kind of all about. And I try to teach students to be well-rounded as well.